today on Zeno Dilidon, I have a very special package that has just come in from my friend Janice who lives in Greece and inside is a whole bunch of goodies. So Janice is someone who I've known for quite a while and he has taken it upon himself to create some of the nicest laser drivers to ever walk the planet for building your own laser pointers and stuff. I'll link his YouTube channel below in the description. Go ahead and see what is inside. I see ESD bays. Oh, yes. Christmas has come early. Now, there's one driver in here that I must absolutely see right away. Uh huh. This thing right here is a physical meme. It is a laser driver that is in the shape of Ohio and as you can see it's a very limited edition not a laser driver that you'll be seeing in your uh, local online shop anytime soon I'll uh, get this hooked up later on in the video let's take a look at some of the other things that he sent got some nice circuit boards to finish off Another little boost driver. Some of these are going to need to be cleaned up. That's no problem. That's why they make a soldering iron. Let's see what else we have here. Another buck. Another buck. Boost. Ah, okay. So all of these are shunt resistors, or low value resistors for uh, current detection, setting the driver current. We'll get into these later on. And uh, I think these are boards for the one power supply that he was working on. I'll have to talk to him about the parts and stuff required for those. But beautiful boards. Those will make great additions to the ones in the desk. Oh, and these. These are absolutely adorable. Probably the smallest laser drivers I've ever seen. Take a look at that. Yeah, well done, man. Well done. That is a tiny laser driver. Holy crap. Let's go ahead and pop it out of the board here. This thing is almost unmanageably small. Let's go ahead and compare it with a laser diode to see how it looks. Yeah, that's comically small. Wow. Wow. Good job, man. Good job. That is that is so tiny. I gotta see if it uh has to fit in this tube here. Hold on. Oh yeah, easily. Easily. That'll be handy for a project I wanna do. So let's get everything organized here real quick. He also sent the uh, the current that all of these are set to. So we'll be taking a look at that later. We'll hook these all up, see how they perform. Another little uh, boost driver right here. This thing is also super tiny. Look at that. That is that is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, even that'll fit in the tube, won't it? Oh, sure will. That is nice. That is so nice. And uh, so he started making laser drivers because he got sick of the cheaper ones. You can get off like eBay and stuff. Cooking his laser diodes. So these are all designed to have very low ripple. and Very good drive characteristics to protect your laser diodes. We'll be comparing these with uh, some other cheaper laser drivers in the video. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Let's see what else we have here. Ah, yes. So these. These have a special project in mind that I'll be doing later on 
hopefully come fall. That'll uh, require four of these, and I'll get into that as well. But yeah, very nicely done. All right, everyone, hold on to your hats because there's quite a lot of information I'll be going over as well as a bunch of tests that I'll be doing in this video. I'm going to try and be as quick and as efficient with that as possible, but that's far easier said than done, so bear with me. The most important thing I'll be checking in this video is Jonas' laser diode driver's capabilities to hold and maintain a constant current because that is very important when you're working with laser diodes as they're incredibly sensitive devices. Now, there are two main ways to make a laser diode driver. The first one is a linear configuration. The second one is a DC to DC converter configuration, which Giannis has used. To explain the difference, let's first go over a linear laser driver. Let's see, that should be one. And there are four main things to take a look at. So let's take a look at this in great detail. Uh, the first part to take a look at is this part right here, which is marked 431, which is an adjustable precision current shunt, which gives the circuit a stable 2.5 volt reference. The second one is this 8-pin IC right here, which is an LM358 operational amplifier. And on the other side, we have a NPN transistor, which is usually a D822, and this shunt resistor right here, which is a really low-value resistor. Now, how this works is the 431 gives us a stable voltage reference of 2.5 volts and as current goes through the circuit the shunt resistor that's right here will have a voltage difference across it so if you were to probe the two sides with a multimeter you get a voltage and that voltage is compared against the output voltage it's 2.5 coming from the 431 and the thing that does the comparing is the LM358. And uh, that uh, is all controlled by this current, uh, sorry, all controlled by this resistor divider network, the potentiometer and resistor here. And basically what it does is it controls how resistive the NPN transistor is. So this is basically a smart resistor, which gives us a very stable output. Now let's take a look at one of Giannis's drivers. Now this uses a DC to DC converter setup and that is mostly controlled by this chip right here and that chip has a couple of features in it. The first feature is a MOSFET and that MOSFET will uh, pulse this inductor right here. Now when you pulse an inductor um, it'll create a magnetic field and then when the energy current is removed it will make uh, electricity by imposing that magnetic field as it collapses into the winding the coil is on the inside and that energy goes through this resistor right here which is the current shunt and how this works is that chip is looking for a certain voltage so it'll pulse the inductor and it will raise the voltage um, going across the resistor here until it reaches its current set point so for example if the chip is looking for 200 millivolts it'll raise the current that is going uh, through the circuit from the inductor up until the difference between the two ends of the resistor reaches 200 millivolts. So that's how changing the uh, resistor value will change the amount of current going through the circuit. So for example, say um, if you were to drop the uh, resistor to uh, half the value in uh, resistance, then uh, you would get twice the current. And I'll talk more about that later on in the video. All of the laser drivers I'll be testing in this video are DC to DC converters, and there are two main types. There's buck, which lowers the voltage as compared to the input voltage, and boost, which raises it as compared to the input voltage. They're also all constant current drivers and not constant voltage. Now you might be wondering, why don't we use constant voltage drivers? Well, let me show you that reason with a simple demonstration. Laser diodes, much like LEDs, have negative temperature coefficient characteristics which means that they get more conductive as they heat up. Here I have my power supply and it's set to three volts and I'll connect it up. And what I want to point out is the amount of current that it draws when it gets warmer. I'm gonna turn off the lights so that way you can see the current, which is gonna be displayed on this lower display right here. And I'll look it up. All right, so 
Right now, it's drawing about 1.2 amps. If I remove the LED array from the heatsink, it's going to get warmer. Now, as it gets warmer, it gets more conductive. And this means that it's allowed to pass or draw more current. You can see this is climbing. So if we use constant current instead of constant voltage, we can prevent this from climbing. And that's going to prevent the laser diode or the LED array from consuming more current, leading to a thermal runaway effect. This means that as the laser diode warms up, it consumes more current, which produces more heat, which makes it you know, consume more current, so on and so on and so on. I'm going to place the LEDs back on the heat sink, and you're going to see the current go down. So temperature plays a huge role in how conductive um, or how much current a laser diode junction can draw. So we use constant current and we eliminate that. Okay, if I wanted to draw one amp. Now even if I remove the LED array completely off the heat sink, the current is not allowed to climb. And that's why we use these constant current drivers to power laser diodes. Now because these are all constant current laser drivers and have no constant voltage support, there are some precautions that you want to take when using these style of drivers. And this really does apply to nearly every kind of DC to DC converter laser driver that you can find. So the precaution is, is that if you're connecting a load up to the laser driver, uh, you're going to want to discharge capacitors here and make sure that they have no power stored in them. Now, the problem is, is that if you connect up one of these drivers without a load on it, there's no current that's flowing across the shunt. I'm sure it's on there somewhere, but I can't see it right now. But there's no current flowing across the shunt, which means that there's no voltage that the chip can read, and the voltage is just going to climb on the output. And that voltage can go as high as 24 volts, most of them, which means that these capacitors get charged with 24 volts. And if you connect a load up to it, like a laser diode, that voltage is going to kill your diode. So it's really good to just take a little piece of metal with the drivers disconnected like this one is, just to short it out, make sure there's no power in there. But to show you this problem, I'm going to show you on the adjustable power supply. Now I have it set to regulate current really, really low. And I have this LED load right here. Uh, it has 6 volts on here. And we're going to have a voltage drop when the LED is connected. Quite significant one. But before we have that voltage drop, the output capacitors of the power supply are going to send a quick spike of power to the LED. So watch carefully. I have to connect both sides. All right, watch carefully. You see that pulse? So it's current regulating, voltage drop 1.7. And uh, I'm going to disconnect it. I'm going to connect it again. We're going to see another pulse. Uh, maybe you can see it better this way. But yeah, that uh, pulse of inrush current is something you want to watch out for. Now that I've gone over the various types of laser diode drivers and some of the precautions to take while using ones that are based on DC to DC converters, let's go ahead and do some tests. Now most of the tests I'll be doing are going to be off camera just to save some time but we'll end up with some nice graphs at the end so here is one of the laser diode drivers a cheaper one that's ubiquitous on things like ebay and this is another dc to dc style this is a boost converter so that means that it steps up the voltage as compared to the input voltage and these are designed to operate anywhere from 3.5 to 5 volts so what i'll be doing is i'll be testing to see how well these can hold current now you use a boost driver when the forward voltage of your laser diode is more than your input voltage. So these are very common to use on green uh, direct laser diodes 
not the green GPS, that's 532s. Um, blue laser diodes, violet laser diodes, also very common to use a boost driver. So what I have here is my power supply, and I'll be using this to test the uh, laser diode driver's ability to hold current from about 3.5 volts all the way up to 5 volts, paying attention to how it does uh, from 4.2 volts, which is the fully charged chemistry of a lithium ion cell, up to 5 volts, see if it holds current, maintains that well. A good laser driver should keep current constant, as these are supposed to be constant current drivers. But we'll see just how constant current they are in these tests. So let's go ahead and set that first test up. I'll be using my multimeter, which of course, because we're measuring current, will go in series with the output, um, the load that's on the output of the laser diode driver. And that'll give us our reading that way. So I'm gonna set up this as I'm going to connect the load. I'll be using this right here, which is uh, about six volts. It's two sets of LEDs, three volts per set in series, which will give us um, the necessary load for the boost driver. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the positive side of the load to the uh, anode output of the laser diode driver, the positive. I'm going to connect the negative side of my load to the positive side of the uh, current input on my multimeter or uh, DC. All right, like that. I'm going to take the, uh, the common, put it on the negative output or the cathode of the laser diode driver, just like this. Now, I'm gonna connect the power supply, which as I said, is giving us 4.2 volts. I got quite a bit of filtering here, we'll talk about that later on, but for now it's just important to remember that it's 4.2 volts set right now, just like a lithium ion battery would All right, and then the positive. All right, so with that all connected, this is how I'm gonna perform the current holding test. Set the multimeter into uh, amps DC. We're going to see what current we get when we flip it on, which will be the current that would go to your laser diode. And we get about uh, 400 millivolts. Turn on the meter light here. Turn off the shop light so that way you can see both of uh, the displays, one on the meter and the one on the power supply. So our output voltage, sorry, output current could be 400 millivolts. And it should remain constant if the voltage is turned up on the power supply. Let's see if it holds constant as it should. And our current is rising. So from 4.2 volts to 5 volts, our current has raised up by about 130 milliamps which uh, is not constant current regulated very well at all, which is why if I'm using these drivers, I'll set the power supply to 4.2 volts, and that will be my limiting factor because the maximum voltage on the lithium ion chemistry is gonna be 4.2 volts. Let's turn it back down to 4.2 volts and see how well it holds from 4.2 volts and uh, lower, see where it's cut out voltages for operation. So back down to 4.2 volts, I'm gonna turn it down and the current decreases. So once again, this uh, laser diode driver does not maintain current very well at all. So that's one thing we're gonna watch out for when testing these laser drivers. Turn the light again, turn that off. The other thing I'll be testing is the peak to peak ripple on the output of the laser drivers. Here's how I'm gonna do that. And this is why I have this uh, right here for filtering because I'm going to filter out all the noise from the power supply as best as I can. We're going to test out the noise floor on that. So let's do that first. And I'll introduce you to the uh, analog oscilloscope over here, Tektronix 475. It's uh, in need of some repair so we get to enjoy all the benefits of a blue screen of death without an operating system. But it should 
do the job we needed to do. So, I thought about using a battery um, just to make sure that I wasn't getting any noise from the power supply, but um, I really do want to do tests while raising the voltage just to see how the current overall handles as far as stability in these drivers. So, sacrificing a better noise uh, threshold um, for that ability. Let's go over the oscilloscope here. Turn it on. I have my probe here. We're going to see uh, the line come up on the display. It says CRT, so we only get one color. Uh, if I clip it on to the calibration clip right here, we can see that we have a one kilohertz uh, square wave signal, and our uh, our output on here is going to be 300 millivolts. I have it set to 100 millivolts per per, per uh, division in the vertical, so that means that we'll have 100 millivolts per division. And if we count the divisions, one, two, three, 300 millivolts, that's what we should be seeing. Of course, we can change it too. So we uh, put on 200 millivolts per division, 0.2 volts. Now we get about uh, one and a half, which is what we should be seeing. We go to 50 millivolts per division. We'll get a larger view at that, 300 millivolts. So we should end up with about six divisions. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six divisions. So that's how we're going to read the analog oscilloscope output here. So with that said in mind, let's see if we can get a profile of the expected noise in the output of this. We're using AC coupling. Uh, because we're not doing DC uh, measuring. So that's why uh, we saw both plus and minus uh, as compared to the middle here. Same thing here. If we're not measuring the output that's 4.2 volts, but the differential um, of the noise that's coming off the switch mode power supply. So let's go ahead and hook that up real quick. And now we get a little bit of noise. A little bit of... 200 millivolts, 200 millivolts per division, so that means, sorry, uh, 20 millivolts per division, so that means it looks like we're getting about uh, about 15 millivolts, which isn't bad. Let's go ahead and change that, see if we can get a better look on that. I'm on lock. Oh, I just realized I had this off. Hold on, hold on. Let's see what a noise board really is. Smooth brain moment. There we go. Yeah. All right. I knew that looked wrong. Okay, now we should easily see the waveform. Let's see. Uh, five millivolts per division. All right, we got a bit of noise here. Uh, see from here to here, five millivolts per division. That's still about the same. A little fluctuation here, but yeah. Let's see if I can get a better lock on that. That's about the best I'm gonna do. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call it about 50 millivolts of uh, noise. All right, now we can set it back to 100 millivolts per division. And see what we get on the output of the laser driver itself. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Solder on the laser driver again. I need some fresh solder, don't I? Oh, technical difficulties. Okay, that's hooked up again. So now we're going to take the front off the probe. 
save astronaut. Just like this. Put that back on. And we're gonna slide that into the little spring clip here. So there you go. Oh, a negative came undone. I don't know why testing your, uh, getting your products tested by a laboratory is so expensive. Lots of labor, lots of time, lots of tools. Oh, it's so hot here in Wisconsin right now that even the solder doesn't want to work properly. Everything is three solar sails into the wind. Alright, double check our connections. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, come on. And this is where I, where I remind you that, uh, Quick and efficient is easier said than done. All right, that's not touching. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right, I think we're fine. Let's go ahead and flip a switch. See what we get on the oscilloscope. Oh, wow, that's noisy, isn't it? So. We had uh, one uh, 100 millivolts for division. Uh, let's see what we have. Turn up the intensity here. Intensity. And uh, we have the position down, line it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, about uh, 600 millivolts. Wow, 0.6 volts. So the ripple on this driver is more than half a volt, uh, which isn't good for your laser diodes. Uh, laser diodes don't like ripple at all. Uh, so the less ripple we see here on the output of the driver, the healthier it is for your laser diode, which we're also going to take measurements of. But this will give you an idea of the test that I'm doing. Of course, I'll list the information as far as the ripple uh, current, ripple voltage coming off the driver, and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah. Uh, let the tests begin.
Let's take a look at the last boost driver that John sent over, which is this guy right here. And it was originally intended to be a 3 amp boost, but it does not do 3 amps. This is mostly because of, I guess, a mislabeling in the data sheet. So, yeah, it doesn't do 3 amps, it does, he says, about 1.4 amps max. But it has some nice features such as constant voltage and soft start. I've taken out the 65 milliohm shunt and I replaced it with 320 milliohm. So, uh, with a 200 millivolt drop across the shunt uh, that the chip detects, we should get about 600 uh, milliamps as the output. We can go ahead and actually test that by doing the calculation. So, we've got a 200 millivolt that the chip is looking for. So, we'll put in 0.2 for uh, 200 millivolt. And we'll divide that by the shunt resistor value. So divide by 0 0.320. And right here is our number. So 625 milliamps. What we should be looking for. So let's see if it holds. 625 milliamps. I will say that uh, these laser drivers do have a bit of a uh, thermal mass to them. Nice heavy copper ground planes and traces and stuff so they're definitely uh, much better quality quality boards and layout than uh most laser drivers i've seen so that's good at least laser pointer drivers i've seen all right uh we have 4.4 volts on the output here go ahead i'll uh, turn on the uh, meter light and we'll turn off the shop lights and see what we get so on all right and we're reading, and move that. We're reading just as expected, a little high. Oh, um, about 650 milliamps coming off the laser diode driver. I've got the power supply here. So I'm gonna turn down the power supply from the lithium ion voltage range. We're gonna see how well it holds. Oh, it doesn't hold it very well. Now, here's the uh, other problem that uh, you should watch out for, and that is exceeding the um, the forward voltage of your load with your power supply. So, for example, uh, the forward voltage of the load right now is about 6 volts. So we have two sets of LEDs that take 3 volts in series. So, uh, watch what happens when we go above the forward voltage of our load and the current on the meter. So, regulating, regulating, regulating. Now, once we hit the forward voltage, we're going to start seeing, or sorry, the forward voltage of the load um, on the uh, input of the driver, we're going to start seeing the current on the load change. So right now, it's going to keep going up and up, and that's because we're no longer regulating in boost mode. So never, never exceed the input voltage um, of the load that you're uh, trying to power with your power supply. Always keep the uh, output voltage on your load higher. To show you this, I'm gonna put in this. It's gonna raise up the forward voltage of the load up to about eight and a half volts. And we're gonna see that it'll regulate better because our forward voltage going to our load is higher than the input voltage. So, let's go ahead and show you that. Let's see, disconnect that right here real quick. Just like that, and we'll uh, slide this piece in. All right, and connect that up. All right, set it back to the lithium ion battery level here. All right, close enough. And uh, turn off the light so we can uh, see all the screens. So there we go. We have uh, about uh, 600 milliamps going in there. Now I'm going to turn down the power. We're going to see how well it holds it. Oh, it's dropping right away. So that's not very stable. All right, we're going to raise it up. Um, so because now we have a higher forward voltage on our load, if we raise it up past six, it should continue to maintain current. So it should be able to go up to eight volts and it should hold the current.
which it does. And we should start having problems right about now. So, yep. So that's one precaution you want to take while using uh, boost mode laser drivers, is to never put a low down that has a lower voltage than uh, your power supply. You always want to, uh, always want to boost in one direction and uh, not have it try to do any kind of bucking because uh, boost mode drivers that uh, don't have any kind of uh, buck mode support, it's just going to raise the current on your laser diode or other load and you'll have problems. So uh, let's reduce the size of the uh, shunt resistor. So bring it from the 320 milliohm range to uh, 160. So I'm going to remove one of the shunt resistors which should give us about 1.2 amps on the output. Go ahead and test that. See how well it holds. All right. So now we do the calculations on the calculator. What's calculating? Go ahead and uh, clear that all. Same 0.2 volts. So uh, 0.2, and we're gonna divide it by the new resistor shunt value, which is uh, 160 milliamps. So divide by 0.160 equals equals uh, 1.25 and that's what we should expect to see on the multimeter oh uh, let's go ahead and fire it up and see how well it works another thing to note when you're working with uh, boost mode drivers is that the current demands going into the driver will always be more than the current demands of your load so we're seeing a little over one amp here because we're expecting more current on our load we're gonna see more current go here. So the current on this is going to be higher than uh, the 1.25 um, amps that we're supposed to be getting on our load. Let's go ahead and uh, check it out, see what we get. All right, turn it on. There goes something. There goes nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see what the problem is. That came off. All right, let's try that again. Off. On. Rising. See if we can get it up to that 1.25 amp range. Oh, it's not quite making it. Well, you can't even see the meter. That's about 1.3, oh, sorry, 1.13 amps. Those are some bright LEDs. Yeah, so it's not reaching there. Uh, not quite, it's trying. Let's go ahead and turn it down. And uh, the further we turn down the voltage, the higher we're going to see the current climb because, of course, the power has to come from somewhere. So I'll watch this number here on the power supply. See how it raises the current up. Uh, really doesn't raise the current up. So it looks like the limitation of this laser driver might in fact be that the maximum uh, current that you can put in the driver, it's turning into a strobe light, the maximum current that you can put into this driver is going to be 1.5 amps. Well, that's kind of trippy uh, and uh, unexpected. Anyway, I'm going to flip it back to 600 milliamps output. We're going to go ahead and uh, get a picture of the output waveform on the oscilloscope. That's really trippy. It's a party. And now for the last style of laser driver that Giannis has sent in for testing, which is his 3 amp buck design. So the Ohio and his 3 amp buck board right here are basically the same exact laser driver. But this one has a little bit of a backstory. As last summer, as he was developing them and starting to learn how to make laser drivers, it was one of his first projects. And here is one of the prototypes that he sent. And it worked out really well. So let's see what this has for a shunt resistor. A R078, so 78 
millo ohms. And uh, we can do the calculations on the calculator to find out exactly what current it should be set to. So unlike the boost, these have a sense voltage across the resistor that the chip is looking for of 100 millivolts, not 200 millivolts. So that's the voltage we're going to put into the calculator. So we're going to do 0 .0, yeah, well, sorry, 0 0.1 for 100 milli, uh, millivolts. And then we're going to divide by the shunt resistor again. So 0 0.078 equals, I guess it just adds the answer, is at 1.28, so about 1.3 amps that driver should be set to. Let's go ahead and verify that. We'll test it as you would test um, a red or infrared laser diode on a buck. So that's a single cell range. We're going to be going from 3.5 volts about all the way up to 5 volts and seeing how that holds up. And we'll go ahead and connect it up to a higher voltage test load and test how it would work on, say, a direct diode, green, blue, or violet. These laser drivers can handle an input voltage of up to 16 volts, so they're really versatile. Soldering iron's warming up. Okay, so this is gonna be my load for that. The forward voltage of this LED is about two volts, two and a half volts, and it can take a lot of current. Not sure exactly how much, but uh, it'll be a suitable test load for 1.3 amps. So just like how I connected the other one, I'm going to connect the positive side of the load up to the positive output of the laser driver here. Oh yeah, that's right, we're testing the prototype. That's right. Okay, so here we go on the uh, anode side. Just like that. That that should be good. All right, and then we're going to hook the meter positive on the side of the uh, current sense loop up to the negative of our load. Probably should use some more solder on there. Will it hold? Yes, it does. And then the common of the multimeter up to the cathode of the laser driver output, the negative. Perfect. And we're gonna test, uh, we're gonna connect the power up to it, so negative to negative of the input to the uh, laser diode driver. Perfect. One more wire. So same setup as I did with the boost essentially. And uh, we're gonna get a good idea of how this performs. And I'm not going to test all of them in the same way, but You'll, uh, you'll get an idea of just the stability on here. So everything's ready to go. Turn on the meter, set that to amps DC, 4.1 volts. Turn it on, should be good. Cool. And uh, here's what we read on the meter. Turn off the light, now that you can see it. So 1.2 amps at lithium ion uh, voltage range. Let's go ahead and turn it up to 5 volts, see if that holds stable. So, up we go. Yeah, that holds stable. And then we're going to turn it down and see where its cutoff voltage is. And uh, see if it uh, goes up in current as the battery dies. And it doesn't, so... There's no way that this driver could damage your laser diode um, if it starts to lose power from uh, its power source. Uh, let's actually take this up to its full input voltage range. We're going to flip it that way. We're going to raise it up to 15 volts, see if it holds current. So, here we go. and it holds solid. So excellent. Excellent design. Flip it back to there, turn it off. It looks good. Now, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just quickly uh, test the Ohio just because I want to see how well it uh, runs. And I'll just fast forward the video test so that way you don't have to see me connecting up everything in real time. We'll go ahead and do that. So that should be quick and easy. All right, 
this one has a set resistor that is 60 milliohms, and that should give us 1.6 ish amps out. So let's go ahead and test that out real quick. Should be good to go. Here we go 1.6 amps, that's what we we're expecting. So let's flip it on, turn it up. 1.6 amps on the dot. Flip it to the uh, higher voltage range. Here we go. How great is that? All right, let's go ahead and put it on a slightly bigger test load. So this is a test load that uh, gives us either 12 volts or 6 volts, depending on how many LED sets you hook up. Let's run it at the 6 volt range. So I'll use these, connect it up to the loop and remove the red LED. So here we go. And it should hold the exact same uh, 1.6 amps because that's its job. Because our load requires six volts to run we can't run it in just the five volt range we're gonna have to uh, have to go up to at least six volts on the power supply to see this work and to see full current out here so let's go ahead and test that now uh let's see 8.5 8.7 that'll work let's go ahead and see if it holds current on a six volt load which it, it should it should hold current just fine oh that's blinding all right <laughs> you know what here we go look at super meter backlight that uh, doesn't help at all well you know uh anyway yeah uh, 1.6 dc no problem it holds just fine of course uh, once again if we bring it up to the 15 volt range it holds rock solid so great that looks good looks bright it's going to take me a couple of seconds for me to see anything more than just a whole bunch of dots at this point. But, uh, you know, LEDs, man. They're getting better every day. So I have to change the shunt on here to match the uh, value on the other one. So I'll be taking out that 78 milliohm resistor and replacing it with the 60 milliohm resistor. So I get the same 1.6 uh, amps out because, as I said, I need four of these for a special project of mine, and we'll get to that right in a second after I change that shunt. All right, at this point in this video, I've taken about an hour of your time to tell you about these drivers and compare them to other laser drivers, and I think we can now have a little bit of fun. Besides, the people who lack self-discipline have far stopped watching this video, and we can be a little reckless. So, as I mentioned before in the beginning of this video, there is a special project that I want to do later on this fall, which will involve using four of these uh, buck mode power supplies. And I have here a test array that will mimic the load I want to drive. So on the test array, there's 20 high powered red LEDs. There's four groups of five in series. And each one of those strings will have uh, an, a current on them of uh, the 1.6 uh, amps coming from the driver. So each string gets 1.6 amps, four strings. Uh, this power supply here alone can't support the current that is going to be required for drawing, sorry, running this. So here I have a meanwhile power supply that gives me 15 volts at 6 amps. Hopefully this will be enough. We're about to find out. So this works. You're going to see the brightest red source of light you've probably seen on YouTube because uh, it's a bit of a large load. I'll plug in that. That looks good. Looks like we're ready to go. Time to flip the switch. Okay. Uh, that was a problem. That was a big problem. Sadly, it's time for a post-mortem analysis, and uh, I actually ended up blowing all four of the uh, buck mode laser drivers at one time, which is really strange. In fact, there are two different failure conditions. And uh, I'll point those out real quick on the drivers that seems to have happened. So take a look at these two drivers here. You can uh, note in the right side uh, lower portion of the chip by pins 3 and 4 
there's a burn mark and that's near the PWM input and uh, the 12 volt input section. So the uh, input sections of these two ended up blowing. Take a look at the other two. And uh, take a look at the upper left hand side of the chip by pin seven and eight. Um, they're blowing on the output section. So two different failures. That's strange. Um, but the other strange thing is, is that uh, all the numbers looked like they should have worked out just fine. Now, I did test each individual driver with with each individual string on my test load here. And uh, they worked perfectly. So, that didn't seem to be a problem. The power supply here, it was 15.25 uh, volts, which is within the 16 volt maximum these laser drivers should be able to take. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you some of the tests that I did on this power supply here just to see if uh, we can recreate any condition that had higher than 16 volts because when uh, I initially uh, did the test right after cooking all of the laser diode drivers I could have sworn that I saw a little over 16 volts on the output but I'm having a lot of trouble um, recreating that condition and given that 5 and 6 look very close on the meter um, and human memory is a little flawed I can't even guarantee that I even saw that so Let's go ahead and uh, connect the power supply up, see what we get. So, I should turn that there, and I'll plug it in, see if it shoots up past 16 volts when first powered on. 15.25, that looks fine. Now, of course, it was plugged in and uh, running for a little bit when uh, it was uh, good to flip the switch. So, it doesn't look like that uh, initially the power supply overshoots at all. So, my thought was, well, maybe it was a case where it draw, draw too much current at uh, one point. Maybe uh, there was a recovery spike in the power supply. So the next thing that I did to test that was just to simply short out the power supply and see how the recovery was. So we're going to look for a uh, swing that's over 16 volts on recovery. So short it out. You could switch more power supplies. Typically can handle this kind of abuse. Recovers right back to 15.25. Do it again. recovers right back to 15.25 so my thought then was hey let's put a resistive load on there here's 3.2 ohms it uh, draws a little over 4 amps at uh, 15 volts so let's put this load on and uh, see what happens I'm going to disconnect it and connect it rapidly to see if there's any problem with um, switching loads or anything else like that that seems stable let's keep them on and uh, see if it can uh, sustain that load Looks like it's sustaining just fine. Yeah, no problems. The resistors are definitely warming up. I see a little bit of smoke coming off those. But uh, yeah, the power supply seems like uh, it's definitely adequate. Definitely does have the juice behind it. I gotta put those somewhere where I won't burn myself with those. So the next thing I did was to go over and uh, check all these wires on my load. Make sure none of the positive input wires were shorting out against one another. Those were all uh, clear. Tested the negative input wires here. Those were all clear. There's no shorts in the load that I could find. And none of them are connected to the heat sink at all. I messed around and pressed on the wires and stuff. Couldn't find a fault in that. Go ahead and test the load. Make sure that all the LEDs light up as they should. I have them on this 12 volt power supply here. And I'll flip the switch, see if they work. Yeah, mighty bright. And it uh, looks like it works just fine. So the, uh, the only thing that I can think of is because these all have inductors and uh, inductors can cause spikes is maybe there was some freak accident that um, interference or an inductive spike uh, when uh, when all of them are connected between all of them caused some sort of interference and uh, made the power supply either kick up past 16 volts or injected a spike into the drivers somehow but uh, it's not necessarily a good thing to connect multiple DC to DC converters on the same uh, voltage rail, especially without any sort of uh, input filtering um, or output filtering for that matter in this case. So a little bit of a strange error condition. 
Uh, the voltage on the power supply looks well within the 16 volt range. Uh, the current from the power supply and its capability to support that look okay. All the numbers look fine. So with all that said, uh, the only thing left for me to do was to contact Janice himself. And this is how that went. Okay, so in the morning, when I woke up, I saw that Patrick has sent me a message on Discord. Oh no, all of the drivers are fucking blown up. I'm like, what? And because we couldn't come to a conclusion where he saw... He, no, he thinks he saw that his supply outputted a bit higher voltage at 16 point something and that may could have killed the drivers but we're not sure that that did the trick and not my drivers that die themselves we will test them on my supply which is as stable as you can get I just need to solder this little wire so that the rest of the drivers make contact give me a second Okay, so filming continuing, I just have to solder this little thing. So, I will put on laser goggles, because this is a powerful array, mate. Yeah. Putting goggles 100 is hard. Okay, so I will set it for 16 volts. 16 volts current limiting at 5 amps because that's how high my supply goes see here it is let me connect the plug wire okay and three two one nope array works fine So as you see, despite the freak accident with my setup, it certainly looks like the Genesis laser drivers can handle 16 volts um, without a problem and work properly. So um, I might need some noise suppression as far as uh, inductance feedback. But anyway, um, there are two more words that he said during his test, and that was laser and array. And in fact, because of him and Styropyro, I do have one of those red laser arrays myself. So thank you to both of you. Let's take a look at this. And... Uh, probably have seen the blue version of these as uh, they're quite common but what these are are these uh, multi laser diode packages and they use them in video projectors as a light source so this would actually be uh, used instead of an LED or a high intensity uh, discharge lamp but uh, they're more efficient that means they run cooler and uh, produce light with uh, use of uh, less energy anyway so as you see on my test load where I had four strings of five LEDs in series, this is also set up the same way. Let me uh, get a good focus on that. I'm uh, applying the camera in manual mode right now for good reasons. So there are four strings of five laser diodes in series and that was uh, what my test load mimics. I have a project that I want to do as I said and that project is to make a little handheld kind of a futuristic looking phaser. And I do intend it to be quite a bit of a engineering feat, uh, machining my own heat sink and stuff like that. Already working on the design, I'll throw up a picture of uh, what that looks like. But uh, what I wanted to point out real quick, when I change the focus again, is what's inside. So, set it like that. And uh, now we can see the laser diodes. So, if you take a look at the bottom row, there's a laser diode behind each lens. So, these laser diodes um, on the bottom... They, uh, they sit on that side of the wall, and there's another little shelf, so it's screwed up like that. Now we're taking a look at the third row, and uh, these are in the same orientation. So if we go up to the second one from the top, you'll notice that uh, the position flips 180 degrees, and now they're on the bottom of a shelf. Let's go up to the last one so you can see it a little bit better show you this way but uh, yeah they're 180 degrees opposed which is interesting so against that wall and then over here against that wall I do look forward to firing this up myself however since I can't do it we'll just have to have Janice do that task for us 
Let's do some burning. I love this array. <laughs> ha! My fucking shoulders will become on fire. <laughs> okay, what else? What else? What else? Because this array is extra fun. Oh, let's vaporize a PCB. Okay, I think what could have happened is a spike when the array turned on tripped on the overcurrent protection but now the supply 100% can go to the 16 amps and it's drawing 4.1 amps the oscilloscope confirms this the line is right at 15.9 volts I got that on video yay wrap up the video and in closing i want to say janice laser drivers are actually pretty good and i look forward to getting more in the future myself as well as trying to repair the buck drivers because i think with the proper noise suppression maybe a slightly lower forward voltage they'll handle just fine in the project i want to do though i want to mention another feature that i did talk about actually and uh that said a lot of his drivers have reverse protection so take a look at his small boost we can see that there's a little channel MOSFET right here right, right here and if we take a look at his bucks they also have a little uh, p channel MOSFET go ahead and point that out so c right there and one right there so that is as i said for reverse polarity protection so uh, his laser drivers for the most part are made to be safe against putting your batteries in backwards which is a nice feature um, protects your laser diode, protects your driver. So in general, I think these laser drivers are pretty good. And if you think they're pretty good yourself, you're more than welcome to take a look at Janice's website. I'll link that below in the description as well. Go and check his channel out. This will give him a bit more of a reason to post up more content, as well as there is a box I send him with a bunch of goodies in there. And I'm sure you won't want to miss exactly what he'll be receiving from the good land of America. Anyway, that's all for this video. As always, stay tuned for more.